Okay, so if you're not quite sure how to solve this algebra problem, well, no worries because I'm going to fully explain the solution in just one second. But uh, let's take a look at this problem. So we have an equation and we're trying to solve for the variable h. So the equation is 2 thirds h is equal to 1 fourth. Again, we're trying to figure out what h is equal to. Now, try not to use a calculator, but if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you want a nice, easy-to-understand way to learn math, well, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is our problem. We're trying to solve for h. What is h equal to? Well, the correct answer is h is equal to 3 eighths. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't understand. Or I forgot my algebra because the last time you saw algebra was like 1981. Well, no big deal. Now, if you've never studied algebra before, this would be a nice little introduction to how, um, how to solve a basic algebraic equation. Now, this type of equation in algebra would be described as a linear equation. Now, there's all different sorts of equations you study in algebra. The most basic type uh, types are called linear equations. Okay. Now, this particular equation only requires one step to solve. So in algebra, you, you first start learning how to uh, solve one-step linear equations, and then you move on to two-step linear equations, and you move on to multi-step linear equations. Something like this, matter of fact, will look like, uh, I'm just going to give you an example, 2 times x plus 5 is equal to maybe 7x minus 9. So this uh, linear equation requires multiple steps. I'll give you an example of a two-step equation right here. So maybe like 2x plus 1 is equal to 5. So this equation right here requires two steps. And the problem that we're going to be doing in this video only requires one step. But uh, some of you might be saying, uh, that's really nice, Mr. YouTube Math Man, but I still don't even understand you know, how to solve a basic equation. So let's go ahead and uh, do a quick review of basic one-step linear equations. And for those of you that uh, um, you know, don't know any algebra, I think you're going to understand this A-OK. -okay. All right, so here is our problems. I got three one-step equations here. And uh, some of you are saying, I've never taken algebra. Well, yes, you um, actually were doing algebra way back in primary school or elementary school. Now, you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, let's just take a look at this problem right here. So x plus 2 is equal to 5. This is an algebra equation. We're trying to solve this equation for x. In other words, we're trying to figure out what x is equal to. Now, x is a variable in algebra. It represents a number. But let's just look at the problem this way. Instead of an x, let's use this symbol, box, right? So uh, let's just kind of go back to when we were like in first grade or something like that. We're like, okay, uh, the teacher would give us a problem like this. Can you figure out you know, the answer to this? What number plus 2 is equal to 5? And so in our little brains, we're like, okay, is it 1? 1 plus 2, now that's not 5. Let's go on to 2. 2 plus 2, that's 4. Now that's not right. And we would finally discover 3 works, right? 3 plus 2 is 5. That's the answer. So we were uh, really doing algebra way back in the good old days when we were first and second grade. But uh, here, we're not going to uh, solve the problem in that manner. Okay, and we're kind of like guessing. But uh, when you have a symbol like a box here, it does represent a, a number. And uh, technically, uh, that is algebra. But here we have x plus 2 is equal to 5, right? So what we're trying to do is figure out what is the value of x, right? So in other words, what is x equal to? That is the solution to this equation. In other words, if I replace x with this answer, okay, uh, that number plus this number is going to be equal to 5. Now, of course, we know the answer is 3, but I want you to think of this equation in terms of we're trying to figure out what the value of x is equal to. Well, here I have x plus 2. 
well, I don't want x plus 2. I want x by itself, right? So you're like, hey, I got an x plus 2. I want x by itself. I wish I can get uh, rid of this uh, plus 2 so I can just see x by itself, right? <laughs> so you might be kind of thinking in those terms, well, how can I get rid of a plus 2? Well, let's do the opposite of a uh, plus 2. Okay? In other words, let's get rid of this positive 2, and we can get rid of this 2 by subtracting a 2 away from it. Okay, so 2 minus 2 is 0, right? And if we do that, we're going to have x all by itself on the left-hand side. But the golden rule of algebra is whatever we do to the left-hand side of an equation or one side, we have to do the exact same operation to the other side. So in this case, we have to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. And we want to kind of do this in this manner, in a column manner. And then we're going to add down like so. So x plus nothing is uh, x. And 2 minus 2 is 0. We don't need to write that. And 5 minus 2 is 3. And there is our solution to this equation. Okay, so the main kind of concept here is to pay attention to what I did. I have a plus 2 here. And you want to be thinking in terms of the opposite uh, operation. So we have addition. So if we have addition, okay, what's the opposite of addition, right? In terms of an operation, you might be thinking subtraction. If you have subtraction, what's the opposite of that? Well, you might be thinking addition, right? So let's go ahead and use that thinking over here with this problem. So if x minus 2 is equal to 5, again, I'm trying to solve this equation for x. I want x by itself, but I have a minus 2. So what can I do to get rid of this minus 2? If you're like, hey, Mr. to math man, I think you want me to uh, look at this sign. We have subtraction. So maybe we want to use the opposite operation, addition, and add 2 to this minus 2. Because if I do that, minus 2 plus 2 is 0. Okay, and that's exactly what I want you to do. So we're going to add 2 to both sides of the equation. Remember, in algebra, you can do anything you want to one side of the equation, more or less, as long as you do it to the other side. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and add down in a column manner. So x is going to be equal to 5 plus 2, which, of course, is 7, right? So this number, x, represents what? Well, it has to be 7 because 7 minus 2 is 5. And this is the solution to this equation. But uh, I, we're talking, again, about one-step linear equations. So in other words, to solve this problem, all I had to do was take the one step of subtracting 2 from both sides. Here, all I had to do is add 2 to both sides. Let's take a look at this last example before we get into our actual problem. All right, so 2x is equal to 10. So uh, what is this operation right here, 2x, OK? Well, the operation is multiplication, right? This is actually multiplication. So what is like the uh, opposite operation of multiplication? And if you're saying, hey, Mr. E2 Math Man is a division, you would be correct. And the opposite operation of division is uh, multiplication, not addition, multiplication. So here we have 2 times 10 is equal, 2 times x, excuse me, uh, is equal to 10. If I misspoke, I apologize. So to solve for x, I have multiplication here. So I'm thinking division, right? So I want to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So x is equal to 5. OK, so again, we're talking about basic algebraic concepts here. But let's take a look at our actual problem. And uh, now that we've kind of uh, you know, went through a few examples with one-step equations, what's going on here? All right, we have 2 thirds h is equal to 1 fourth. So what is this operation right here, 2 thirds h? Now, you might be saying, hey, Mr. E2 Math Man, this is very much like the problem 2x is equal to 10. We're talking about multiplication here. So maybe we, uh, we need to use division to solve for h. Well, we certainly can. That's not the best way to do this problem, but it does work. OK, so let's go ahead and try to solve this right now. Matter of fact, if you understand what I'm talking about, maybe you want to pause the video and see if you can solve for h. But let's use this concept of dividing both sides of the equation by the number in front of the variable, right? So we have 2 thirds h is equal to 1 fourth. Now, the number in front of a variable is called a coefficient, just uh, so we can kind of build up our algebraic uh, vocabulary. But I'm doing the same thing here as the problem 2x is equal to 10, right? I'm dividing both sides of the equation by 2. So if I want to solve for h, I can divide both sides of the equation by 2 thirds. But now I got all these fractions. I got 1 fourth divided by 2 thirds. But you know, we're just following this principle here. Again, we're talking about a one step equation. But now I got to do all this fraction work right here. We have 1 fourth divided by 2 thirds. 
Okay, so what's one-fourth divided by uh, two-thirds? Well, that's going to be our solution, one-fourth divided by two-thirds. How do we divide fractions? Well, what we need to do is change this fraction problem, or division problem, into multiplication by flipping the fraction to the right of the division uh, sign or division operator upside down, right? So instead of two-thirds, this becomes three-halves. And now uh, this is going to go from division to multiplication. How do we multiply fractions? Easy. We simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 1 times 3 is uh, 3. 4 times 2 is 8. So h is equal to 3 eighths. Okay, so that is the solution to this equation, but there is a better way to solve this equation. Okay, so here, again, is our problem. Now, what I just showed you is technically technically correct, but I want you to kind of think of uh, you know solving this equation as kind of like a game, and we're trying to get h by itself on this side of the equation. I just want h by itself. So I got two thirds in front of this h, and you're like, boy, I wish I can get rid of this two thirds. How can I get rid of this two thirds in front of this h? Right? Well, we can kind of see what I'm doing right here. We kind of have to think outside the box a little bit. Like, what can I do to a two thirds to get rid of it? But in this case, I can't turn this into a zero, right? I don't want to, you know, make this a zero because zero times h is zero. What I want is h, all right, or one h. So how do I turn a two thirds into a one? Okay, well, that's uh, not going to be that difficult. The way we do that is multiply that two-thirds by three halves, right? So what we do is take this fraction, flip it upside down. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. That's what it means to flip a uh, fraction upside down. So three halves times two-thirds. Again, we're just flipping this fraction upside down. If we multiply this, we're going to get, what, six over six or one. These threes cross cancel. These twos cross cancel. So we get one H. That's exactly what I want. But if I multiply the left-hand side of the equation by three halves, I also have to multiply the other side of the equation by three halves, right? Okay, so one-fourth. Uh, times three halves. How do we multiply fractions? Again, we're just going to multiply the respective numerators and denom denominators. So we're going to have three eighths, which of course is our solution. All right. So when you are dealing with a fractional type of equation like this, it's always best to uh, multiply both sides of the, of the equation by the reciprocal. Right? It helps you avoid, uh, you know, dealing with complex fractions like this over here. Okay, now if this little video helped you out, make sure to like and subscribe. That really does help me out big time on YouTube. My goal is to reach as many people as possible. And my channel is all about trying to make math clear and understandable and interesting. But I definitely uh, can use your support to grow my channel to reach as many people as possible. So please consider hitting that uh, subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. And if you need um, full-on math instruction, then check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And the kind of the level of algebra that we're talking about here, I teach in my pre-algebra course uh, and my math skills rebuilder course. I also have a ton of additional course courses that I teach basic algebra. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.